We thank you for the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. Jesus said, I must go. If I do not, the Comforter will not come. And that's one reason the disciples knew that he made it to heaven. Because the Holy Spirit came. And they knew he made it home. Father, we just want to thank you for the Holy Spirit. And Father, any way that we have grieved him in our thought life and in our personal opinions about things that really don't make no difference one way or the other, but we just say, Lord, forgive us and help us, Lord, and to never grieve you. We thank you that we can walk by your power, by your wisdom, by your instructions, by your guidance. We thank you for guiding us and leading us in the path of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Uh, I want to talk a little bit tonight about, you know, if God's already done it, <clears throat> that's why we need to read the scriptures and find out what he's done and then learn to confess and thank him for what he's already done. And I want us to open the scriptures up tonight in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Bless you, bless you, bless you, my son. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 to start with up on the board. <clears throat> Paul is speaking here. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I love this. The Father of sympathy, pity, and mercy, and the God who is the source. I read. We, we sung that song. He's the source of all mercy. Everybody, he's, say this. He's my source. my source. Nail that down. Now, you've learned something tonight, which I know you already knew, but I'm reminding all of us, God is our source. And we go to him. Now, look what it says. Who is the source of every comfort, consolation, and encouragement. Now, there's, there's knowledge. The Bible says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Now, you've learned something tonight. God is our source. And he's the God of all what? Comfort, consolation, and encouragement. Now, look at the next scripture, the next verse. Who comforts, consoles, and encourages us in every trouble, calamity, and affliction. Now, how do you make this work when you're in troubles, when you're in some type of calamity and affliction? You go to your source and you have the knowledge to know that he is the source of every comfort and consolation. Father, in this moment of time, right now, Lord, I thank you that you're comforting me. You are transmitting to me, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that comfort that I need to walk through this trial. How many's got it? How many got it? Raise your hand. Okay, that's important. See, th that's what you have to do. You don't have to ask. In that You just thank you for it. You know that he is the your source. You know that he's the source of all comfort and consolation. And so you go to him and you, and you, and you pray, you know, I, and we've all done it. And when I first started out, you weep and cry, holler and hoot and beat on the floor. And, and I understand that. And, but <clears throat> that don't get the job done. <laughs> You're just expending your emotions out. But when you come to have the knowledge that he is the source, that he loves you, that he cares about you, and he will impart to us when we go to him who is the source of all uh, co uh, encouragement, all uh, comfort and consolation, everything that we need, he has it. Now, there comes a point when you've got to receive it. So then when you find that he is, you, now you've got to say, Lord, I thank you. I receive it right now. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I receive it. I receive it. Thank you, Father. Now I'm going somewhere with this. So hold on. Let's go to the, let's, let's finish this. 
so that we may also be able to comfort and console and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble or distress with the comfort, consolation, and encouragement which, which we ourselves are comforted and consoled and encouraged by God. Amen. Now, I just said something, folks. I just said something. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, I didn't hear you. Amen. 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 <laughs> Just winking. Yeah. <clears throat> if you're going to be a minister, and we all are ministers, you will comfort and encourage others with the comfort and encouragement you got from God when you were in your problem. Amen. See, the mess, the message comes out of the mess. I mean, you know that. When, when we're in a mess, and we begin to cry out to God and say, Lord, you're my comforter. You, you're encouraging me. Father, I receive it. I receive it. you got to receive it. And we begin to receive it by faith. Remember, everything from beginning to end is by faith. So when we're in that particular trouble, <clears throat> don't waste time. Receive, receive, receive. Then you come to church and somebody tells you, you know, uh, I sure need prayer for this. I mean, this thing is bad in my life. I need help. Well, you're just loaded with the, com the comfort and consolation of God. You're just all filled up with the consolation of God because see, you've been in a lot of trouble. You know all about it and you just have received and received from God because you've been in trouble all week long in financial trouble. The car hasn't worked. The sewing machine quit sewing. Everything went wrong. And instead of cursing it, you just said, Lord, I receive your comfort. I receive your consolation. I receive your power. I receive your wisdom. Lord, I receive. Now you're just getting all filled up. How many know? How many you hear me tonight? Are you hearing me tonight? Don't say you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing if you ain't received nothing from the, from the, from the source. And so <clears throat> when you go out, uh, Frank was sharing tonight about <clears throat> him and Linda went out and, and, and prayed in, at the restaurant. And uh, this restaurant, no, this, this woman needed prayer. And they prayed and everything. Where did they get what they got to do? I mean, how, where did they get what they needed to pray for the woman from the, from the source. And so they are vessels. We are vessels. See, the power is not of the vessel. The power is in the vessel, and the power has come from God. The consolation has come from God. The ability to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. But if we ain't received nothing, we've just read the scriptures that don't understand it, we're just a hollow tube. <laughs> Blowing smoke. <laughs> now, let's finish. Let's, read, let's make sure we understand that. Now, who comforts? Who, who, who God comforts and consoles and encourages us. When did when does he do it? When does he do it? When we're out, when we're out playing tennis, no. uh, when we're at the beach, no. uh, nothing wrong with that. Now, don't get me wrong, but when you're in your troubles, now there ain't nobody in here has ever been in any troubles. I know that, so you ain't got nothing, right? No, you full of the consolation if you have received from Him when you were in it. You know, when everything's going just fine, you just can't. Re you you don't you're not going. What do you what do you know? You do fine. You're happy, man. You got two dollars in the bank. You're doing great. <laughs> but when you ain't got no money, you better go to the source and let him pour it in. Let him pour it in. Let him pour it in. See, this is the secret of the body of Christ becoming strong. Because everything that, that, that Phil has, that he, that he got from the source, when he prays for me... He's going, to, he's going to put what the Lord's put into him, and it's going to flow into me. And then I'm going to come over here and just need, needs a little encouragement. I lay hands on her and see it. It's like an electric current just flowing through the body, all through the body, encouraging, strengthening, loving, 
And where did we get it? From our source. God is the God of all comfort and consolation. Now, jump over to uh, verse 8, that same chapter, verse 8. <clears throat> Now, Paul is still speaking. He says, for we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about the afflictions and oppressing distress which befell us in the providence of Asia, how we were so utterly and unbearably weighted down and crushed that we despaired even of life itself. That's why I don't grumble no more. <laughs> I read the story about Paul and all the trouble he had. And I said, and I look at my trouble, and I say, <laughs> this ain't even trouble. That's trouble. <laughs> How many of you know that's real trouble right there? That, that when you're crushed, weighted down, and that you despair even of life itself. Go to the next verse. Indeed, he says, we felt within ourselves that we had received the very sentence of death. Wow. Well, this is it. I'm a goner. Didn't know it was going to be like this, but I sure is a goner. I mean, there it is. I mean, you said, well, this is it. I mean. Look up. Wow. Hmm. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to read that again. Indeed, we felt within ourselves that we had received the very sentence of death. How many has ever been pretty close to that besides me? <laughs> uh, some of you have. You ain't been there yet. Well, this, yeah, well, well, I'm not going to say nothing there. <laughs> But that was to notice. But that was to keep us from trusting in and depending on ourselves instead of on God who raised the dead. Ooh, my goodness, why did this happen to us? We sometimes, and, and, and listen, I'm, I'm in the same pot you are, and I've had to learn these things. But when you feel like you're dying, wow. Now, Paul was at that point, but he learned the lesson. Now, you may be in a situation right now. What is God trying to teach you in that? Let's read it, make sure we understand. But that was to keep us from trusting Let's read it all over again. Indeed, we felt within ourselves that we had received the very sentence of death. But that, what was that? That sentence of death, that I felt like I was going to die. But that was to keep us from trusting in, depending on ourselves, instead of on God who raises the dead. So you go all the way back in the garden. See, the whole thing is... That God wants to walk with us. But we don't want to walk with him. Now I'm talking about mankind in, in general. And so many Christians are that way. I can, they can handle it, you know. But you see, when God begins to work in your life, there's lessons to learn. But the, but the fruit of learning that God raised you up, you were going down, down, down and you quit trusting everybody and everything else but God all of a sudden you've learned he's my he's my source if he don't raise me up I'm a goner I've been there now that's how you learn that God is God I mean you learn that God is God and you know that God is God and there is no other than him and this is how you learn these lessons. It's not intellectual learning, but it's learning through the very experience of, oh, I'm dying. And then God comes in and rescues you. They're going to take the car away. 
And somehow God comes and saves. And you're able to keep your car. And somebody writes you a check out and say, here, pay the thing off. Now let's go over that again. Because see, indeed we felt within ourselves that we had received the very sentence of death. Why? But that was to keep us from trusting in and depending on ourselves instead on, of on God who raises the dead. Let it soak in, troops. Mm -mm. Go to the next verse. Y'all read the Bible all of your life. You've never seen that before, have you? <laughs> See, that's revelation knowledge. For it is he. See, when it's all over, when it's all over, you got a testimony. And you stand up in church and say, I want you to know something. This happened, that happened. I mean, I, I felt like I was going to die. And I remember when I had that anxiety attack many years ago at Rick can testify to it. He's had a few uh, treatments along that line. I figured, I thought I was going to die. That's what anxiety attacks will do. You, you, this is it. You're checking out. Where's mom? I want to say goodbye, mom. <laughs> Bring the kids in. I want to kiss them all one by one. You feel like you're going to die. You, you, you experience that same thing that Paul experienced. But you trust God. Man. And God raises you up. Yeah, they took me to the hospital, and they examined me, and I was the most healthiest person. I mean, the doctor says, you're more healthier than I am. <laughs> I knew what the problem was. We, Susan, we had poured our lives out for years for people. That's when I learned to intercede and pray and trust God in a deeper way and come up against the enemy that, that's constantly bombarding all of our minds every day and all these different thoughts that come into your mind. You're not going to make it. Uh, this person's talking about you. Uh, you. This is happening. All this is through your mind, imaginations and all of that. And you, you, you don't know what to do. And you have to learn that there is an enemy called Satan that comes around to kill, to steal, to destroy. And then you learn to start praying. That's like learning to take a bath. No, look, mom will have to wash you. You, you wash yourself now. No, how many wash yourself now? Let's see your hands. Okay, I'm just checking on you. <laughs> well, give, didn't I? <clears throat> see, you learn to pray for yourself. You learn to go to the source yourself. You learn to say, Lord, uh, instead of me sucking this and sucking that out of this person and that person, Lord, I want something in me where I could pray for people and give them some of the blessings of God that you poured into me when I was in my trouble. When I was in my down and out, Lord, I've learned to receive. I've learned to receive. I've learned to receive. I've learned to speak. Thus saith the Lord. See, it's a learning process. Now, let's move on here a little bit here now. For it is he who rescued and saved us from such a perilous death. Now, you look at your life and you see the different places that God has delivered you. Unless you've had a powder puff life. Anybody in here had a powder puff life? <laughs> I don't think many of us in here have. I think we've all been just pretty well beat up by a lot of different things, but we've come to, but we have some, we have God's consolation and power and strength in us. The devil may try to talk you out of it and make you think you don't, but you got it. If you've drawn it from God, you got it. I remember when I first started speaking the word of God and, 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 and I would say, Lord, I love you with all my heart, so mind and strength. And I love my neighbor as I love myself. And I felt condemned from one end to the other when I said that. But you know the devil challenged me and I, I said it again and every day I'd say it and every day I'd say it and every week I'd say it and I'd sing it and I'd say it and when I pray I say it. I love you Lord. I love you Lord. I love my wife. I love my children. I love the people of God. I love even my enemies. I bless those who curse me. I bless everybody. I bless myself. So you got power to bless yourself. 
And then you see how God works through his word. He sent his word to heal them. He sent his word to deliver them. We learn to speak his word. Regardless of our feelings. And now when I say it, I I sense it. I feel it all over when I say, Lord, I love you with all my heart. So mine is strength. And I love my neighbor as I love myself. And it comes alive. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And when you say it, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And now as you pray, you begin to pray totally different. Let me, let me share this with you. I got this off of, uh, I hope uh, Missy didn't mind, but I got it off of her desk back there. Thank you, Missy. I checked all the materials you put back there. <laughs> Researchers say that 87% of the illness that plagues us today are a direct result of our thought life. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is that man. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is that man stinketh. Somebody say Amen. What you been thinking all day, by the way? Let's have a little check out here. Let's, what have you been thinking? <laughs> Give us a break. Don't tell us. But I'm here to help you. And I'm here to talk to myself, too. This is a big area in most Christians' life. They don't know how to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. They don't know how to bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. See, there are a few things we have to do to walk victoriously. So anything that comes in my mind that doesn't line up with the Word of God, I cast it down. And everybody say, I do too. I do too. All right, God heard you. I'm here to encourage you. Cast it down. You start thinking about something, and you can think yourself into sickness. That's what that's they're talking about. I've seen people say to me, I'm so sick of myself. I say, well, how do you see yourself? Well, I'm just no good. I'll never amount to nothing. How many's ever been there besides me? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to raise your hand. I know you have. See, we all, see, we all go through the same sequences that God brings us all through. See, I know that as a shepherd. See, See, how many has ever been hung up in, in Romans chapter 7? How many even knows what chapter 7 means or talks about? Huh? The things that I want to do, I don't do. The things that I wish I didn't do, I do. Huh? You may be there now. Don't be all panic about it. We all love you. Yeah, we love you. We've been there. If we're not curled, we slide back. But I'm in Romans 8. How many is in Romans 8? Okay. Some of you might not know what it is. Well, you got your Bible, read it. All right, look what it says. For it is he who rescues and saved us from such a perilous death. And he will still rescue and save us in and on him we have set our hope, our joyful and confidence and expectation that he will again deliver us from danger and destruction and draw us, I love it, to himself. Whew. Powerful word. Look at that. Powerful word. Wow. Mm. We could almost camp out there. That's what I do. I camp out at certain verses <laughs> over and over again until I say, Lord, I want to see it clearly. I want to see something that last part. He will again deliver us. Notice it's he that delivers us. From danger and destruction, and he draws us to himself. <sighs> oh, I want to get closer. Thank you, Father. You're drawing me. Everybody say, Lord, Lord you're drawing me, drawing me. Closer, closer to you. To you. Mm. And you just meditate on that and then put your faith in him that he is well able to do that 
and far beyond anything that we may think, hope for, or whatever, he is well able to draw us closer to him as we trust in him. So when you're in trouble, wow, that's great. Count it all joy. That's what James says, count it all joy. Now we know why. Because it's going to cause us to get closer to the Lord. That trouble is going to push us closer to the Lord. Have you noticed that? And he will pour in the consolation, the strength, and everything. Now, <clears throat> here's, here's scriptures that, that, that I, I, I say when I uh, just... When everything is doing real good or when things aren't doing too good, I, I, just, I, just, I just begin to say what the Word says. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Sometimes you don't know which way to go, but lean not unto thy own understanding but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. Who saved you? Say he. he. Who filled you with the Holy Ghost? He. Who sanctifies you? He. Who comforts you? He. Who guides you? He. There's nothing for us to boast about, but everything to praise him for. You know why you are in Christ? Why we are in Christ? He put us in Christ. 1 Corinthians 1.30 tells us that. Before the foundation of the world, he chose us to be his children. Now, this next verse I want you to look at. Verse 11. Now, notice what Paul is talking. He says, while you also. Now, who's you? Those Corinthians. While you, Corinthians, also cooperate, how? By your prayers. For us. Look at that. Paul knows the power of prayer. The prayers of a righteous man and woman availeth much. I'm going to ask you a question. Are you a praying person or a complaining person? Ouch. Murmuring, grumbling. Is your middle name Murmur? <laughs> Say, I love you, Pastor Bob, but you make it hard sometimes. <laughs> you ought to study what the Scripture says about murmuring. No, we won't go that way tonight. I want to edify you. While you also cooperate by your prayers for us, talking about the Corinthians, they're cooperating, incorporating, not incorporate, they are cooperating. Uh, by praying for Paul and, and, and his, uh, his team. Helping and laboring together with us through prayer. Now notice, thus the lips of many persons, or the prayers of many persons, turned towards God, will eventually give thanks on our behalf for the grace, the blessings of deliverance granted us at the request of the many who have prayed. Woo! Let's meditate on that one. Don't let that get by. You've never seen that in the scriptures, have you? you? You've seen it, but you didn't know what it was. Get it now. The prayers of a righteous, but the prayers of a righteous church. Um, in Acts 12, in Acts 12, as we read Acts 12, we find that Peter was put in jail. How many times you know that Peter was put in jail and the church was praying for him? The many, the many, the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. But listen, the prayers of a righteous church availeth much. Now let's make sure we understand that verse of Scripture. How many understands it? How many sees it? How many comprehends it? Let's go over it. While you also cooperate, how, how, do, how, does it, how did they cooperate with Paul? By praying for them. Helping and laboring together with us as they, uh, Paul and his company prayed. 
Thus, the lips of many or the prayers of many persons turn towards God will eventually give thanks on our behalf for the grace, the blessings of deliverance granted us at the request of the many who had prayed. So Paul got delivered because many had prayed. How many sees it? Nail it down. Nail it down. Get home, meditate on those scriptures. Powerful. That next scripture, I got it written down here. All right, turn to 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. That's around the corner. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4. Let's start with 13. 13. 2 Corinthians 13. Now, Paul is speaking here. And I've, I've held this scripture up before the church many times. Yet we have the same spirit of faith. So that tells me that faith is, can be a spirit. Spirit of faith as he had. Now, who, who did we say he was? Somebody tell me. How many remembers that? Who's he? David. You don't remember? David. King David. You check that out. That's Psalms 110. I think it's verse 3. So we have the, Paul is saying we have the same faith that uh, King David had. Notice. As he had, who, who wrote, as he had, who wrote, well, we know David wrote a lot of the scriptures and Psalms, and have believed, and therefore have I spoken, we too believe, and therefore we speak. That's why it's good to get into the Word of God and find out what God says, and speak only what God says in your prayers. Speak what God speaks. Get the, Paul says, I have the same faith that King David had who wrote. We too believe. So speak what you believe, not what you feel. Oh, my goodness. We, have that, we make that mistake, don't we? Sometimes Susan said, when I'm, fighting, I'm, I'm going through a situation, she'll say, how you feel? I, I don't want to say nothing. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to die. That's the way I feel. <laughs> but I don't want to say that. I want to say, I believe that God is healing me. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? So I have to say, Susan, please give me a break. I'm trying to do it God's way here now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one down. Now look at verse 14. I want to uh, go back and say Psalm, it's Psalms 116, verse 10. That's what it is. I got it mixed up there. It's Psalms 116, verse 10 that David says that. Okay, look at 14 now. Assured that he, assured that he, who's he? Now, remember, when you read the Bible, you've got to find out who he is, who they is. Who is he? Huh? Assured that he, who raised Jesus from the dead? God. So you know it, it. See, who raised up the Lord Jesus? Well, what will he do for us? Will raise us up also with Jesus and bring us along with you into his presence. Your faith is in him. It looks like I'm going to die. Hallelujah. See, you've got to continue to get your mind renewed. You know that. The natural mind, the carnal mind, is enmity against God. It's, it's, it's deadly. You have to learn to get your mind renewed and, and know what Jesus said. Now, th th this is in John. He says, uh, he says, I am the resurrection, Jesus said. And he that believeth in me, though he be dead. Now, I want you to catch this. There's new, more revelation for you. He shall live. And he that believeth in me shall never die. Hmm. But how many of you know at the rapture, there'll be people living on the earth that will not experience death. And, and that'll be some of you all, by the way. Because it's just down the corner, down around the corner there just a little bit. You, you'll never see death. 
in the twinkling of an eye. All that money you got in the bank. Turn it loose now. <laughs> Can you just see the, you got, hanging on you? And the Lord's got you by the f feet and he's trying to get you to heaven. And you're hanging on to your bank. Okay. <laughs> Did you get your mind renewed? All right, look. I said that J Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And he that, that believeth in me shall never die. And I used to think about what, you know, the Bible says it, it's appointed unto man. Once to die, then what? Then the judgment. I talked to a guy one day about, that, about dying. He said, I ain't scared to die. I said, well, that's great. What are you scared of? He says, I'm scared of that meeting after I die, which means the judgment. Okay. <clears throat> assured that he who raised up the Lord. And he says, assured that he, God Almighty, our source, who raised up the Lord Jesus will raise us up also with Jesus and bring us along with you into his presence. Whew, powerful. Now, Jesus said, he that believeth in me shall never die. Now, wh 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 what group is that? I said the rapture. Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, 14, about 15 and 16, right in there. And, the, and, and we that are alive, what? We'll be caught up with them to meet the Lord on Mount Olive. Huh? In the air. Powerful. Turn around and shoot back to heaven. The marriage ceremony will be up there. The big dinner. I can't wait. They got, it's not chicken, it's something else. I forgot what it was. But it, Fried oysters, <laughs> clams. I tell you what, they'll be heavily cooked. It'll be good. <laughs> but remember that now, what Jesus said. If somebody ever asks you, just tell them about the resurrection. We that are alive, when he comes, we will not taste death. See, so you go back, you go to 1 uh, Corinthians chapter uh, 15, I think it's verse 58 or something like that. Oh, death, where is thy sting? What, what do you mean, oh, death, where is thy sting? If you're alive, when Jesus comes to the rapture of the church, death won't sting you. You won't experience death. Remember that scripture? I can grab a hold of this now. O grave, where is thy victory? Your body will never see the grave. Why? Because you're caught up in the twinkling of an eye. Ding! You, you get in your glorified body just like that. That'll be the fastest time that Susan ever got dressed. That I didn't have to wait. <laughs> How many husbands have to wait on your wives? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Boy, you're brave. Uh, uh, that man's brave back there. I mean, uh. <laughs> okay, let's finish this now. I'm going to let you go home early tonight. Now, let's look at the next verse. 15. All right, here we go. 15. For all these things are taking that that uh, things are taking place now. All these things are taking place for your sake, church, so that the more grace, divine favor, and spiritual blessings extended to more and more people, multiplied through the many, the more thanksgiving may increase and redound to the glory of God. Now, it's hard to understand that. Let's move, move to the next verse. Therefore, being that that's going to happen in, in the last verse there, in verse 15, being therefore that that's going to happen, therefore we do not become discouraged, utterly spiritless, exhausted, and wearied out through fear. How many of you know fear will wear you out? That's why we have to come to that place to say, God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, and don't change your mind. Hold on to that. Praise God. You could be shaking and rattling and whatever, you know, and, but you just hold steady. Say, no, God's not giving this to me. No, sir. God's giving me power. See, I got power. 
I'm pretty. That's for the girls. I'm good looking for the boys. <laughs> you don't look in the mirror and say you're pretty. You're creating an image. Is God pretty? Oh, he's glorious. Well, you look in the mirror. You're looking at God because you created an image of God. Boy, when I learned that, I repented about putting myself down so much. You know what I mean? I mean, wait a minute. If God can love me, why can't you guys love me? <laughs> so I don't hear anybody say, I, we do. <laughs> Most of the time anyway. <laughs> All right, uh, therefore, we do not become discouraged, utterly spiritless, exhausted, and worried out through fear. Though our outer man is progressively decaying and wasting away. That's why Paul says, I look at no man after the outward appearance anymore. <laughs> but I say every individual from the inside in the heart. By the Spirit of God. We spend, and I say America and the world spends billions of dollars trying to make themselves keep from decaying. Oh, I got this new cream out. And I don't care how many wrinkles you got, it'll take care of every wrinkle out of your face. Just mail me $135 and I'll mail it to you in the morning. <laughs> Billions of dollars are spent just to make us look like we ain't decaying and wasting away. You ought to just give. Well, let's don't go too far with that, Bob. <laughs> Though our outward man is progressively decaying and wasting away, yet. Our inner self is being progressively renewed day after day. And that's what you say. That's what you say. My inner man is getting stronger every day. Thank you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Because you see, when you get into the Word of God, it's feeding your inner man. And, 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 and the stronger your inner man is, the, 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 it equips you better to take pressure. A weak spirit cannot take pressure. Once you get your spirit strong, you're just strong. But the outer man can't take that pressure. But a little pressure come and you, most of the time we've all experienced it, we just blew up. Used to, that is. But no more. Now we realize. Now, if you're still in that category, that, uh, that, that like that, and you, you, you got to concentrate on the inner man. Get that inner man, Lord. That's what the Word does. Lord, thank you that you're strengthened to me. Where in my inner man, Paul prays that prayer in Ephesians, strengthening the inner man with might by the Spirit of God. So concentrate and, and pray that prayer. Lord, you're strengthening my inner man with might by your spirit. And as your spirit man gets stronger, you're able to endure anything. That's just the way it is. See, the, the spirit man can be trained. The spirit man can, can get, you know, if you were going to uh, strengthen your outer man and We'd all have, uh, get down here and lift up these bars, wouldn't we? You know, we just, all right, now everybody reach down and pick them up. Now. <laughs> you know, we just keep doing that and the outer man gets stronger. But see, these trials and tribulation comes to us. And as we go to our source and as we draw from him, his strength, his power, it flows into the inner man. The inner man gets stronger progressively, being renewed day by day, getting stronger and stronger. And then we're able to stand tall. And whatever the enemy comes, you don't run from him. You look and see if you can find him because you want to give him a one, two, and a three, four. All right. 
That's a good scripture. Now let's go to the next one. I'm going to let you go early. <laughs> please, please. Now, <clears throat> man, it's really been rough. Look what Paul says. You, have you studied Paul's life? Shipwrecked, bit by snakes. The brethren, the brethren were after him, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. You see, they called them Sadducees because, she they were sad, you see. Okay. Anyway, they, the, 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 the Christian brothers, were ever, the Roman soldiers, the, the Roman government, everybody, everybody's after the Apostle Paul. And he says, for our light momentarily, remember, affliction, this slight distress of the passing hour. Folks, when you get older, now none of you are there yet, but I'm getting close. You look back, I say, my goodness. Seems like I was just in kindergarten. It's going by so fast. I can't believe it. Honey, did we just get married the other day? Time goes by so fast. Now, you might not be there. Maybe you don't even think about it. But, but, but see, Paul said this passing hour. What do you mean this passing hour? This little bit of time we're down here on this earth is just a passing hour. Say, say, I want to stretch your mind a little bit tonight. I want you to think eternity. Everybody say eternity. eternity. We're going to live throughout eternity. This is just a, our life down here is just that. You see that little speck right there? That right there? See that little speck right there? See that? All that wall is eternity, and that's our little life right there. A little speck on the wall. Yeah. This passing hour is, is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us, even though it's a passing hour, an everlasting weight of glory, glorious favor, splendor, magnificence, beyond all measure, excessively surpassing all Comparison and all calculations, a vast and transcendent glory and blessedness, never to cease, never to cease. See, we got to get the minds renewed and realize, don't let the devil fool you. Just because you've got a little teeny problem now, it ain't but nothing. It's only a passing hour. Now, I, listen, I've been through trouble. I understand, I understand, but I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to give you a bigger vision here. You might make one mistake or two mistakes or ten mistakes, but that is not all your life. Hear what I'm saying here tonight. Some people just, well, I blew it and that's it, I quit. No, listen, let me tell you something. You ain't going to quit. You're God's child. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. But understand that God is an eternal God and he wants us to, to enjoy eternity with him. And that's forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And we can't even conceive it in our mind. But Paul says, listen, this is just a little short time. James says, but a vapor. You, poop, your life is over. Absolutely. And we think we're just like, oh man, this is, no, listen, just a vapor. Pass an hour. Look what he says. Next verse. Key verse and last verse, and we're going to go on this. Since we consider, do you? And look not to the things that are seen. Is that how your mind is renewed? Do we look at the things we see? Or, or do we look at the things that are unseen? Because if you look at the things which are seen, temporary. But if you look at the things which you can't see, it's eternal. You can't see your spirit man. You know he's there. I hope you do. You see your outer shell, but you don't see the, the real you. The real you is the spirit being. Now look at that. Look at that. Since we consider, see how you look at things... It's how it's going to affect you. How many understand that? How you perceive things, if you perceive things wrongly, it's going to affect you wrongly. <clears throat> once, once you become a, a leader, and somebody says something, says something, you know, and somebody says, what are you going to do? I ain't going to do nothing. Now, when I get all the evidence that I need, that I can make, 
decision on the situation, then I'll act. But other than that, I will not act. How many understand what I'm saying? I, I had a that man come up and said that, well, your daughter came by my place the other day and she cursed me out. And this was back years ago when they were going to grammar school. I said, uh, no, sir, my, my daughter, that's not my daughter. Oh, yes, it was your daughter. And I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll check with her and I'll get back with you. So I checked with Sandra. It was Sandra. That's my number two daughter. She said, no, Daddy, I ain't never. You know I wouldn't do it. I said, I know that, darling, but I'm going to check with you like I told the man. No, Daddy, that wasn't me. Now, suppose I just right away, you know, grabbed her and beat her and restrained See, you don't do that. You don't act on hearsay. You don't act on what people say. Don't. No, you get the facts. Then you can move in grace and mercy. And you can, know, you can do what is right. So I was going to go to the man the other day, but he came to me. He says, you know, I want to apologize. I says, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't your daughter. I said, well, thank you for coming back. I knew it all the time. But, but I give him the benefit of the doubt, see. So remember that. Someone said, well, you know, I heard somebody say so-and-so. Well, what am I going to do? Forget it. Don't suck in everything that people say. You're just going to be one Help me out. <laughs> you just, how many of you understand what I'm saying? You got to learn that, children. Amen. And don't get all ruffled up because somebody said something. Just let it go. Cast all. I mean, you're going to pay me not to sing. <laughs> Cast all my cares. Upon Jesus. Tammy, Sandra, Patsy, Susan, Phil. <laughs> huh? How many of you understand what I'm talking about? You've got to learn to cast all your cares upon the Lord and pray for everybody. And don't let it make you have some bad attitude towards somebody because you heard somebody say something. Aren't you glad that we're just down here but a short time? Some people work down here like we're going to be here for, they're going to be here forever. Well, they are if they're Christians because they're coming back. But your house won't still be standing. All those pictures you dust off, you know, it's good to keep the house clean. It's all going to go to nothing. Now, let's look at that. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are visible that we can actually see, they're temporal. Brief, fleeing. But the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. See, I can remember preaching to people just like you are out there now. They all dead. They all gone. <laughs> I've been preaching for 60 some years. People that are sitting right out there in other places, they're all gone. And I preach the same thing to them that I preach to you. And now they're up there in heaven and they say, you know, Bob was right. <laughs> That old gray-haired man was right. <clears throat> I hope I helped you a little bit tonight. Amen. You meditate on them scriptures and let God give you more revelation. Father, there's so much to share, but the time's running out. We just want to thank you tonight that you have provided salvation for us. The greater is he that is in us and he that is in the world. We want to thank you, Father, that Jesus lives in us. He's given us his life. We live by the life of another. We live by the faith of another. We thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit is the one that makes it alive to us. And we give you the praise and the glory. We love you, Lord, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want everybody to say, Lord, I love you with all my heart, my strength, and I love my neighbor 
as I love myself. And you just keep saying that. And watch God produce it. God will produce it. He's the source. He's the one that makes it happen. Amen. If anybody